To understand why increasing genetic diversity through meiosis is important, we should consider the story of bananas in the 1950s. Banana farmers at the time were largely producing one variety of bananas, the Gros Michel variety. While it was shorter and fatter than the Cavendish variety we are used to today, it apparently had a much more appealing taste. But since banana farmers largely relied on clones of the exact same banana plant, there was almost no genetic diversity in the banana population. When a banana-eating fungus swept through the Gros Michel crop, there was no genetic diversity and the entire variety was lost to the disease. Now, you can only get Cavendish bananas at the grocery store. If banana farmers would have had a little foresight, they would have put Gros Michel bananas through the process of meiosis on a regular basis. This may have preserved enough genetic diversity in the crop to protect it from the banana-eating fungus. Meiosis has several mechanisms that recombine genetic variants from different lines to create unique and resistant offspring. The AP test will definitely ask a question or two on how meiosis increases genetic diversity. So, follow along with us as we dive into the process of meiosis and show exactly how it increases genetic variation in a population. In this video, we're going to cover section 5.2 of the AP Biology curriculum. First, we're going to look at what genetic diversity is on the molecular level and why this genetic variation is so important. Then, we'll see how the process of meiosis distributes genetic variations throughout a population. After the first quiz, we'll take a closer look at the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment, two byproducts of meiosis that ensure genes are randomized through the creation of gametes. Finally, we'll see how the process of crossing over in meiosis helps overcome some of the limitations of storing multiple genes on the same chromosome. If you only need to review one of these sections, feel free to skip forward to the times outlined here. Otherwise, let's get started. To understand how meiosis increases the genetic diversity of a population, we first have to understand what genetic variations are and how they can help a population survive in the face of a constantly changing environmental conditions. Diploid organisms carry two alleles for each gene, one inherited from the mother and the other inherited from the father. These alleles contribute to the overall phenotype or outward appearance of the organism. The processes of meiosis and sexual reproduction happen between each generation of organisms mixing up alleles that the offspring receive. This is how a red and white flower can produce a pink offspring, and how these pink offspring can produce offspring that show all three color variations. Let's see how this genetic variation exists on the level of chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes, also known as homologs, are chromosomes received from the maternal and paternal gametes during the process of fertilization. Each of these homologous chromosomes carries a number of genes, in the exact same location on each homolog. Keep in mind that these homologous chromosomes will never become attached at the centromere, because only sister chromatids are attached to the centromere after the process of DNA replication. Let's put this in the context of our theoretical flower color alleles. If these homologs carry the gene for flower color, each homolog carries an allele from a different paternal source. A red flower receives two capital A alleles, one from a maternal source and one from a paternal source. A white flower receives two small A alleles from each parent, essentially meaning it has two broken copies of the gene and cannot produce any red pigment. A pink flower receives one functional capital A allele and one non-functional small A allele. Keep in mind that before meiosis, this cell will replicate the DNA. This will create two sister chromatids of each chromosome, effectively copying each allele so that there are four alleles present. As we will see, these alleles will be divided up into separate gametes during meiosis and potentially mixed up by the process of crossing over. Why is this important for a species' survival? Well simply because changing environmental conditions are unpredictable. Let's say that bees like pink flowers and moths prefer white flowers. Bees may prefer pink flowers and may be better pollinators most of the time. But if all the bees in an area get wiped out by a pesticide, then the pink flowers are doomed. 
If these plants only reproduced via asexual selection and did not use meiosis to mix up their alleles, they would all become extinct, much like the banana variety from the beginning of this video. Think about this. Meiosis not only mixes up the alleles for one gene, but it mixes up all paternal and maternal genes for every trait in an organism. That is why a litter of puppies can all have unique markings and traits. In the wild, these combinations of different alleles can mean the difference between life and death. Now, let's take a broad look at meiosis and the mechanisms that ensure genetic diversity is increased in future generations. Pretend that the flower producing plant from the previous slide is an organism that has two chromosomes. Each chromosome has two homologs, one from the plant's mother and one from the plant's father. By prophase one of meiosis, each homologue has been replicated and the sister chromatids are bound together at the centromere. Here, we can see that the maternal chromosomes are purple while the paternal chromosomes are green. By metaphase one of meiosis, the homologous chromosomes have aligned on the metaphase plate. Chromosome one in this example carries the gene for flower color. Remember that each homologous chromosome has been duplicated, so there are four alleles present, a duplicate set of maternal alleles and a duplicate set of paternal alleles. As meiosis one progresses, these maternal and paternal homologs are segregated into different cells. As meiosis two takes place, the sister chromatids in each of these cells are separated into cells of their own. Ultimately, this process distributes one of the four alleles into each of the four new daughter cells. While the process of meiosis easily splits up these homologous chromosomes and the alleles they carry into individual cells, the real magic happens when you consider how all of the genes present on all of the chromosomes are randomly distributed to daughter cells. Plus, another special event called crossing over takes place during prophase one that exchanges genetic material between maternal and paternal homologs. We'll take a closer look at these processes after the first quiz. Now that we've covered genetic variation and took a peek at the different ways meiosis can increase the diversity of a population, let's see how you would do with these concepts on the AP test. Pause the video now and take this short quiz. You can find answers to these questions through the quick test prep link in this video's description. The process of meiosis leads to two of Mendel's genetic laws the law of independent assortment, and the law of segregation. As a monk who enjoyed breeding and observing pea plants, Mendel had plenty of time on his hands to discover these laws simply by observing how often different traits appeared together by counting the phenotypes of the offspring. But with the advent of microscopes and high throughput genetic sequencing, science have been able to confirm and expand on these laws. Let's see exactly what each of these laws states. The law of segregation states that maternal and paternal alleles for a gene are segregated into different gametes. We saw this in the last section as meiosis 1 separates homologous chromosomes, then meiosis 2 separates alleles located on sister chromatids. By contrast, the law of independent assortment states that different genes coding for different traits are inherited independently. For example, the gene for flower color and the gene for plant height do not affect each other. In other words, if one gamete receives an allele for purple flowers, this does not affect whether that same gamete will receive the tall allele or the short allele. This law ensures that traits are randomly assorted in new generations, creating a massive amount of genetic diversity. A major exception to this law is genes that are located on the same chromosome. These are known as linked genes due to the fact that they are physically connected. However, meiosis has one final trick up its sleeve that can separate all but the most closely related linked genes, crossing over. If you think crossing over is simply the latest TikTok dance move, you better tune in in the next section. Now's a good time to take a quick break, grab a snack, and stretch your legs before we dive into the process of crossing over between homologous chromosomes and how this process increases genetic diversity. The process of crossing over, also known as recombination, occurs during prophase one of meiosis, as the homologous chromosomes are condensing and being pulled towards the metaphase plate. 
Specifically, as the homologous chromosomes are condensed and collected, they are temporarily bound together by the synaptonemal complex, a series of RNAs and proteins that hold the two homologous chromosomes together. This binding of homologous chromosomes is known as synapsis. Considering that the two non-sister chromatids that are closest to each other share the exact same sequence of genes, they have an incredibly similar structure. While the maternal and paternal homologs can carry different alleles, alleles are typically only the difference of a few nucleotides in a chromosome consisting of hundreds of millions of nucleotides. So, when these two incredibly similar non-sister chromatids cross over one another, this is known as a chiasma. When the two non-sister chromatids are crossed over each other in this way, they have the potential to form a holiday junction. This four-way DNA structure results when the chiasma causes breaks in similar places along each non-sister chromatid, and the open DNA strands base pair with a strand from the non-sister chromatid. As the DNA repair enzymes try to resolve this structure, they have a chance of mixing up the strands of DNA that have become entangled. As the synaptonomial complex breaks down and meiosis continues to completion, the recombinant chromatids are separated and end up in separate gametes. As such, this has the effect of mixing up the alleles normally carried by maternal and paternal chromosomes. This is why no offspring look exactly like their parents or grandparents. Even if they were to receive a full set of maternal or paternal chromosomes, the process of crossing over ensures that specific combinations of traits linked on chromosomes can be recombined between maternal and paternal homologous chromosomes. Now that we have covered the specific processes within meiosis that encourage genetic variations within a population, let's see if you picked up the important points. Pause the video again and take this second short quiz. You can find answers to all the questions in this video through the quick test prep link in this video's description. Be sure to check out all of the other resources we have created to help you study. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it helpful and informative. Leave us comments if you still have unanswered questions about exactly how and why meiosis increases genetic diversity in a population of organisms. Be sure to subscribe to the Biology Dictionary YouTube channel to find all of our AP Biology videos and study resources. Good luck!